ku Atsuat Daniaki, Midaya Bitsin Gasim, Shelia Tatsi, um, Namoto to Amskapi Pikani, Nisito B, Nisinski Sixta, Axkinamatstochki, Itono Yo, Nixista Anasta Matsuaki, Nena Anasta Nisita Bapoyi, um, Nochkwa Anasta Sitzikum Saguma B Gi Natui Utsama Ochkadopi Naas Asitsumo Gi Leo Davis Nahas Anodaki Gi Peter Tatsi. Um so what I said to you in Blackfeet, and I have all my students starting out saying this is um hello, my Indian name or my Blackfeet name is Good Shield Woman. And that was given to me by my Aunt Gertie, Heavy Runner. Um, and it's meant that um, when I was given that name, it's because I took care of everyone around me, especially my, uh, I'm the only girl with all boys of my age, but I was kind of the ringleader, the bossy one. So I always made sure they were okay. Um, but that's how I got my name is I always made sure everybody was okay. Um, my English name is Shalia Tatsi. I am... Blackfeet. I come from um, Badger Creek, but currently live in Browning. Um, and I also said I am a teacher at Browning. Uh, so I teach Blackfeet language, Blackfeet culture, and uh, Bikani arts here at the high school. Uh, so this is my first year at the high school. This is my eighth year teaching, and I've taught first grade. I've taught fifth grade in Haver and I've taught, I was the sixth grade immersion teacher at the middle school for the last two years. Um, I also, I used to coach cross country and I help with our rodeo team. Um, now I have two sons. So um, I said their Indian names, which is Thunder Boy. And I've also said Sorrow, Holy Sorrow Horse Rider. So, um, and their English names are Thunder and Buck. And they are, um, Mom's little bosses, I guess. Um, my grandparents are uh, the lately uh, Cynthia Kip. Um, so if you kind of know in Blackfeet country, so she's this lady in the red hat and she was well, really well known for her hats and her really long braids. Um, uh, I didn't get to meet my grandpa Leo, but I heard he was a really good bronc rider, uh, cowboy. So that's kind of my mom, my grandmother's side of the her family. Um, and then... My other grandparents are the late June Bolshu, and she was one of our founders of like education in our family. Um, and it's really awesome because they're for it's Women's History Month, so there's like an article about her and her sisters and brother going around right now about um, I guess the Bolshu family, and then now our elementary is called Bolshu Elementary, so that's really awesome. Um, and then also because um, I am a grandparent's baby. So if you look at the picture to the left, um, those are actually my my actual grandparents. But to me, they're my mom and my dad. So in Blackfeet uh, ways, I guess the first grandchild is like always taken in or used to be taken in by the uh, grandparents. So I'm their first grandchild, but I'm also like their daughter. And um, so I call them my mom and my dad. Uh, so to me, those are my parents. Um so that's my foundation of where I come from. Um, and I guess because of these ladies and my grandpa, like I pushed myself into education. Um, at first, I wanted to be a physical therapist, but I started having to learn the bones and the anatomy and it just blew my mind and I didn't want to do it anymore. And when I was younger, I used to like set up my stuffed animals and teach them. And then I was always going to conferences with my grandma because when we had no school it was you know we had to go with the teachers right and so she was a teacher and my grandpa was a teacher so I was always in the classroom some way somehow and so uh through them I went through a teacher program in Fort Belknap and then I pushed myself to get my master's through northern and uh then I got my class seven a couple years ago so that's how I started teaching the language um, and it's a big push through my family is I always wanted to, the main thing, I guess my grandma said is that um, with being Blackfeet and being in this world that we live in, 
uh, the only way that people are going to learn about us is if you teach them. And so she was kind of my motivator, like, I need to do this. And this, she's still my motivation of why I do what I do. Um, so it's pretty important for me to, you know, teach you where I come from and who I am and um, all that. And that's what I do with my students. So this is my focus wall, I guess. Um, but it's also like my Google Classroom, so my virtual classroom. So I always show my students this, like, this is who I am. This is where I come from. Like, I'm I'm just a normal person like you guys. I'm no different than they are. Um, I, I love showing them this picture of Badger Creek. So between the horse's ears, that's my favorite place to be. Um, there's no words that can describe that. You just have to look at that picture or go saddle up yourself and go look at it. Um, there's my sons and uh, my significant other. And so here's where my education started. And I'm actually an alumni of Browning High School, but I also went to Haver for most of my life. And so when Haver and Browning were playing this past week, and it was really hard to cheer for both teams because I couldn't decide which one to go for. Um, and then that is a picture of my grandma's sin down here when I graduated with my master's. And that was probably like the happiest day of my life. And to have her there was awesome. Um, so another big thing uh, is teaching kids like as Blackfeet people, you know, I'm Southern Pigan, I'm Scotty Bigani, but we have four bands of where we came from. And so um, our Blackfoot Confederacy, there's, uh, there's three of us in Canada and one here in Montana. And so I've, I've been trying to use these uh, pictographs to kind of demonstrate how to use that. And so right here, we're on Scopi Bigani. And then we have a Butsi Bigani, which is Northern Pigan, um, or else just Pigan. Then we have Sitsika right here. And then we have Gainai. And each one is like a representation of of that tribe. Um, and so it's pretty important and something if you're not a Cats fan and you didn't watch Ryan Davis or Leo Davis play uh, something in their videos that they're always doing like when they introduce themselves is they're always like they have a fist to their hand and uh, face and they're rubbing their cheek and that just shows that we're uh, Blackfeet and so that's something pretty cool to just you know put two and two together um if you didn't get here in time, at the beginning I showed my, so this is like my focus wall. This is what I show my students. Um, so I use my bit emoji that kind of represents who I am. Um, and then it's like a, a step into my classroom, especially because these kids have technology, especially at the high school level. Um, so a lot of these are links to my like Google Classroom. So my classes that I teach, they can go click on that, go right to it, find out what we're doing that week. Um, I also put this on there because we are visual learners. So I will let them know what we're doing. Um, and then a lot of my links in here, uh, little like the pictures, the posters on that cork board, they're, play they're linked to like specific lessons that we teach. Um, recently we started using our like our we call it our uh, BPS writing system. And so that brings us right to that link. Um, one main thing that I've been focusing on is our introduction because I, I feel like that's really important to tell people who you are and where you come from. So that's like our main, like we, we do that for about two weeks and I bring it back at midterms and I bring it back at the end of the semester. So that way, when my kids are leaving my classroom, my hopes are that they can speak their the one language that they have with them are their intro in Blackfeet, whether it's on paper or it's from memory, that's what I want them to leave with. Um, our prayers, very important. So I have that included. Um, we've created lessons on the teepee. We've created lessons on the Buffalo box. And then to the left, you'll see those little four boxes. So in our Blackfeet department, we have four um curriculums developed, I guess to say. And so we have a language, uh, culture, design, and then history. So we all broke them down and we tried to put lessons for each one in there. And 
for the last three summers I've been on this committee, we, all we've been doing is like adding to it and adding more lessons. And uh, it's not just our Blackfeet teachers, but also using what our like our outside teachers are doing besides our our department. So that's that's what's on this page, and that's kind of helpful for us. So just wanted to point that out for you guys. Um, <clears throat> so after the intro, like knowing who we are, where we come from, especially um, what band we are, or what um, what part of Montana, I guess, even if we're a different tribe, because I have kids that are, you know, it's a modern word, we're, we're interbred too right now, and uh, we're, we have other tribes that we're mixed with also so we we try to learn where we come from our but the main thing is our Blackfeet language here especially if you're in my classroom um so my next thing is like introducing your family you know knowing how to say uh our family terms in Blackfeet and the best way like I've learned to do this is um having them take pictures or have pictures because they're they have them on their phones already and in regardless if they tell you they don't like taking pictures or not like they have them um this is the best way i can do that is uh take pictures of them put your family's names and it's not in any order it's not like the you know the i call it a bracket with a traditional genealogy part but to be able to look at your dog and say oh you know nito imitam jinx um, so I, I try to teach him those terms to be able to say like, hey, that's my dog. Her name is Jinx. You know, that's what I'm getting them to say instead of just recognizing words like, or, you know, imita is dog in Blackfeet, but to say nito imitam is saying my dog. So you're claiming that dog. Or then you start adding like the numbers and you start adding the colors, you know, things like that. Um, so for me, this is like the, our next step that we you know, we do in my classroom and that helps to put like a background with kids and let them know, um, you know, who they are. And uh, especially with these high school kids, we started finding out they're all related some way, somehow. And so it's really interesting to know and like watch their faces. Like it's, you know, oh, hey, I'm related to you or hey, that's my grandma's, you know, sister or you know, so and so. So it's really neat to like finally see them like opening up and, you know, they might bicker about not finding this person or that person. And I just tell them to go as far as you can, like as far as you can, who your family is, because, you know, our as Native people, like our family is so. I don't even have a word for it, like there's not a word. We're just like we're. You know, we start claiming people that are our cousins in our family and they're not, you know. So I always just tell them, like, to try to use their mom and dads. But then when we get into that, it ends up being our grandparents, you know, and then we don't claim this side and we don't claim that side. So I always try to be um, respectful to each person's family. And I don't put like a limit like, you know, you have to go four generations back or anything. It's it's this is for you guys to know like who your family really is and where you know and to acknowledge like your family terms and I'm sorry if I'm going so fast and I am also fighting a head cold so I I feel like I sound funny and I'm trying to hold in my snots <laughs> um something I've learned recently is um students don't want to give up their phones at all and so I've really been trying to like brainstorm how to make it like technology based and like include our language and so like what you guys are looking at now is what I call like our black feet uh, bit emojis and so I had to use my snapchat and then we downloaded a bit emoji app that goes with their snapchat so if they don't have social media they could still download this I guess um but it's also like if they have a phone um and that most of them do some of them that didn't we just we drew pictures and that was fine for them too they were okay with that um so what you're looking at we are some basic verbs in our language and so we try to find like a um, an emoji that fits that verb so that when the kids are looking at it and like if they're sending them to them like they're gonna be like oh okay now I remember what that is you know and for me it was 
it it made me uncomfortable but also it's like hey we're in this newer time like how can we make this more engaging for these kids and they want to be on their phones anyways and so <laughs> when we were making these some of my students they were like sending them to each other and then you know they're in this high school age and they're starting to like say like hey how do I say um like hey babe you know and I was like I don't I don't know how you would say that you know and so we were laughing and so you know we put the words together so we put hello and baby so we said oki isitsimon and the kid he recorded it and he sent it on snapchat to this girl and I don't know how they were laughing, you know, but they were saying like, hey, that's our new pick pickup line. And so they were learning how to say like beautiful woman, fine woman, you know, and so they were putting those words together. And even though it was like in a different, I guess, idea of what they were doing, like it's still like it was still like it was fun, I guess. And we were laughing and we had a good joke about it, you know, and um, I just told them to be appropriate. Don't be inappropriate when you're saying things. And it was just a way in their little minds that like made it um you're still using the language you know like you're still trying and you're using it even if the girl didn't respond or she responded it was it was nice it was fun so each of my kids made one of these and it's kind of like a cheat sheet to show them those verbs because once we start going through our next lesson um they're putting they're trying to find a, a subject I guess so I told them to do a person, but some of them picked like an animal. And for me, that's okay, but it it will change a little bit. Um, so I tried to tell them to do a person, um, you know, man or woman, girl, boy, old lady, old man, uh, baby or a child. Um, and so like you could say like this, this girl that's running on this treadmill right now, you would say, so that girl is running. That's basically what you're saying. So we try, you know, trying to find an image that way. Um, and something I, I, I mean, you guys would have to see it on Facebook or TikTok. Uh, recently, I shared a video of my little relative and we, uh, he was my actor. And so I would tell him, you know, all right, jump, you know, walk, uh, run. And I tell him all these actions and I was over there taking pictures and, uh, then we put it together. And so what it did is, um, then I went over with my audio and I told them, you know, that boy is sitting, that boy is laying down, that boy is smudging, you know, and we put it all together. And so, I didn't know how to do a TikTok. So they had to show me how to TikTok. So we were sitting in here. I was showing them the language and then they were showing me how to TikTok. So I, I feel like that was a win-win for everybody that period. And um, we all had fun. And that was my good example for the assignment that they're working on now uh, that correlates with this. And so now they're, they're going from their emoji and they're making a video and it, and like, I feel like they're having fun. Like I have kids in the halls that are like, you know, hey, take off running or something, you know, not in the hall. I mean, not running from somebody, but they're showing that action and they turn into videos now and um, they're turning out pretty neat. And so uh, that's my way of meeting the kids in the middle, I guess, with their technology. And because some days it's pick our fight, pick your battles what you're going to do today. Are you going to take away their phone and argue with them about their phone? Or are you going to just, Hey, you know, be mindful, but just put it aside for now and just engage in the lesson. You know, I'm happy you're here. And, um, that's, I guess that's our biggest, um, blockage of our language is just technology right now. And so I'm trying to find a way of these kids, like, Hey, you did this now, you know, where our language is building because of you guys. Um, so there's a couple pages like that. Um, this right here is called ASLA and Robert, our director, Robert Hall, he's the one that showed us um, this method that he took in his master's. And so if you look at this picture, it's different than the last slides. The last slides had words with it. This slide absolutely does not. So um, putting the language with pictures is how like we recognize things and so like 
we've gone through all these slides and I mean, I, you know, I could uh, go through this for you guys. I'm just going to go left to right, but this isn't how we teach it. So, but I'll just give you the names. Um, Nina, Aki, Sakumapi, Agikuan, Goose, Bokwan, Bokadok, Esupatsis, Ganaskina, Bus, Imita, um, you can say Sitsi, Arbiksi, uh, Sitsi is tiny bird or small bird, uh, Bunikamita, Otbootskina, Otsista, uh, a bunny, I'm going to say Boxit Gui because I'm in a ceremony, um, you guys could say Giaio, Ini, Bita, and Axkini, so what, how you teach this is, so you don't have to go in order. Um, so what we do is like, I, I'll teach them the words and then like we did in order, but I want to also like, I point to them out of order and I say the names and then I'll have a kid come up here and you have to have like, it's a total body response. So you have to be like looking at them. Cause I always tell them, cause you'll have kids that will point and like look at you and say ball. And I'm like, I'm not a ball though. That's the ball, you know? And so you got to show them like to stay focused. Cause you want, you know, you, you want the kid to be looking at it and then saying it, that's what you want. So even if you say it, so like if I pointed to horse, you know, I'm saying punigamita, that student should be saying punigamita. And then encourage your kids, like if you're doing one-on-one -on -one in the back, the rest of the class to be saying that too, because they're hearing it from me, they're hearing it from that kid, and then they're hearing it, they're saying it together, so they're getting it three ways. Um, you know, but if a kid's like goofing off and you'll notice the kids that aren't paying attention or like aren't getting it, um, those are just the ones that you gotta work harder with. And uh, I had an observation last week with this group and Oh my God, I was ready to pull my hair out, but it was because they weren't focused and it's my smallest class, but it's my class with all boys in there. I had to get like my actual, like I have a ball in here. I have a rock in here. We have a chair. We had a cup. Like I had to like get actual items out and, you know, here is a goose and gave them a cup, you know, and I made them feel it, touch it, look at it, like everything this, you know, and start using it more. Um, the chair, like I made them sit in it, each one, I made them carry it around, you know, just repeating the word though, as they were like, you know, actually touching it. Finally, they, they got it, you know, and that's, you know, you just gotta kind of like figure it out. You know, I, each, each student is a different learner and the, even the ones that want to learn, um, don't always give, you know, a hundred percent effort. They're just kind of there. Um, but there are the kids that really just like pick it up and you don't think they are, uh, just keep, I would just say, don't give up on any of them. Like, just keep going. Like, as like, even if you want to pull your hair out, or even if you think they're not getting it, like they are listening, it's just keep pushing through and use it as much as you can. Um, so again, this is the ASLA method and then it moves on whoops, to something like this. So I call the last page, like level one, like the very basics. And this would be like level two. So now you're putting um, an action with like a subject. So like, you know, you're going to, the first picture, you're going to say, Nina Oksgasi. So that man is running. That's what you're saying. Um, and then it moves on, you know, so there's, we have more pictures. Um, if I could show you a visual in my classroom, I totally would. Um, there's just so much in here that I wish you guys were here to actually see it. Um, some things, I don't know if you guys have heard, but, uh, we are working with Anna East to create a, uh, an assessment online so that with our language, we could, we could score it immediately and, um, see like where our kids are going, I guess. Um, last year we did paper and pencil and it was like a thick, very thick packet. Then we had to go back and grade each one and, you know, that was really tough, but it was worth it um, to get to where we are now. Now it's like automatically scoring for us. And the things that we have to score now are like their intro and a prayer. 
So we actually have to like, you know, listen to the recordings of the kids. But um, I'm really thankful for that part because it's starting to help us as teachers to see like where our kids are and also like to kind of like, I don't know, finally have an assessment, I guess, for what we're doing. And so some of these pages, they're not from that assessment, but they're to help us learn those words that are on our assessment. Um, and so like this for us is our, uh, like our seasonal stuff. And um, it looks like some formations. Um, here's our directions with our seasons. Some more weather. And again, like we're, as Indian people, we're visual learners. So I try to find like a picture that goes with it, even if it's like a little clip art. Um, but you don't want something, you know, like <clears throat> the ones I was finding for like wind, you know, the trees are blowing. Like in my mind, you could, you know, you could read it so many ways. So it's try, try to find a picture that actually fits what's going on. Um, and also try to like, you know, I guess something that's really simple. Um, this is our body parts. Um, and I actually have one in my notebook somewhere that I drew myself, but these drawings are from, um, our Bolshevik elementary. Um, so the little kids use this the most, um, our colors. So we have a list of our colors here and then we have inanimate and then animate because once it becomes alive, like you'll you'll change it to a different um, ending to make it, you know, like you're saying a yellow horse instead of just yellow. Um, so those are things that we talk about all the time with these kids. Um, some of our foods. So I try to find um, like common foods, especially for the, like our kids, what they're seeing at lunch, breakfast here at the school, something that they'll recognize so that when they do, you know, actually see they go into their cafeteria, like they can say, you know, oh, in non, and they're, you know, asking for a banana, or they recognize that it's a banana, you know. Um, so I try to find some in that, um, some drinks and some, I guess, condiments, as you want to say, some sides, uh, things that they'll see kind of every day. And, you know, we had to put the Pepsi on there because every kid likes Pepsi around here. Um, so just like finding that common ground, so things that they'll recognize. Um, so this one's without the words too. And so again, that goes back to that ASLA is trying to recognize what that is, um, uh, without, you know, the actual word written there. Um, something I find interesting with these, the older kids get this a lot better than the younger kids, I guess, um. And I think it's because our older kids are able to uh, go actually drive and see it for themselves. Um, so our map, so turning it into, um, you know, our, uh, our language, you know. Um, so the main part of this is uh, the yellow are our main communities. And then there's a there's a Blackfeet name for those communities. Um, and then the blue, of course, are uh, rivers and lakes and so having those names and knowing where they're at and what I found interesting um I have a group of hunters I guess in my classroom that go hunting go ice fishing go fishing like there are outdoorsy guys and I gave them a blank map and I was like all right go label this so like well we don't well what do you want us to put on it and I and I told them I said go you know I had a list of what they needed to do they had to put their communities they had to put their rivers the lakes um excuse me they had to find where uh chief mountain was um and then our main roads in browning and uh it, it was really neat to see them just drive in that part because they're like oh yeah that's you know that's a sharp plate that's where we go get this fish or you know and so they started like you would think they're so loud at that time but they, they're the ones that got their map done the fastest and they are like visiting and, you know, and they're like, well, if we tell you this place, we're going to tell you where all the elk come from or where all this, this trout is or where that trout is, you know? And I was like, well, you're not going to give up your honey holes. You just got to tell me where the, um, the lakes are. And they're like, all right, all right. So 
it was really um a touching moment for me is because they're kids that kind of I don't know lack in their academics some days but then you give them something like this and it just like they just took off you know and um also like teaching not everybody on our reservation even knows where these reservations or where these places are on our reservation you know so learning like where we sit like where we actually are and where things are and um of course like you know they want to find where their house is so then we took it the next level and we went to like um what is it google earth and then found typed in their addresses or you know pulled up where their house was and they have older pictures so they're like that's not how my house looks but you know they started to figure out where the things that we go and use every day are right here you know uh, some kids didn't even know like where our tribal office was so then we had to go into a different lesson and that's like finding places in our community you know and then talking about like where do you guys go shopping like you know like where do you buy your clothes where do you go buy your groceries and how many of you have to go you know get gas and things like that so uh you know I think learning your reservation that way is pretty interesting and then knowing that you know we have a term for that in our language um so for us in browning it's called e don't know yo and that just means the agency um and historically you know we 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 have been here but we had so many different agencies until we got here um so that's a whole another lesson on the black feet um so this is a map of Montana. So these are our, what, seven, eight reservations now. Um, and this is what us as Blackfeet people called uh, those different tribes or that place. So that's this in our language. This is what we call, you know, other places. <laughs> Um, so it might not be, you know, what they call themselves, but it's what we as Blackfeet called them or what we thought of as them. Um, this is the agency map. So I like to show like where we came from, like, especially for our student, my, our students to know, you know, we started from Fort Benton and made our way back to Browning when the uh, reservations and the treaties were starting. Um, then there's the original territory map somewhere. I need to find that, but that's what we talk about also. Um, this is more of a little kid thing. Uh, is like we we were just trying to do calming corners and this is a lesson on feelings and like how they're feeling and so again we tried to use what we could um describing their feelings and then putting the language there um and i think that is it on that part um so these are just like kind of ideas and lessons that I do in my classroom I know that there's more uh, especially like me like I teach culture um, with our language and like that's even you know talking about smudge that's talking about like how we act at, you know you know how we act in a classroom is how we should act in a like when we're sitting in a teepee like we have those foundations and protocols you know not to be just running chaotic in here and you know don't run in here and try to be bossy I guess we talk about respect so many times um but there's just there's just so much and I've been teaching my students how to sew how to bead you know how to work with parflesh um I work next or right across from Kevin Kicking Woman and so we're you know we rely or I rely on him a lot I should say but you know what should I do at this point and he's like you know what you're doing you just do it and I'm, you know, I always have to catch myself because I think I'm not doing enough. And then he comes in here and he kind of lines me out. So um, he's really helpful. Uh, so like, you know, I, my big thing is trying to get our language out there as much as I can. And not once have I ever said I was a fluent speaker, but I'm a fourth generation learner is what I call myself. And so a lot of it is I have to hear it from others. And then I'm practicing it over and over so many times. Like I, when we're taking a drive, like I'll, I'll turn the radio off and, you know, just practice my words. Like, what do I need to say? Like, what do I need to practice at this moment? And, you know, it's cooking dinner at night 
you know, are, you know, in the evenings and I'm st- I'm trying to cook and trying to say the words, our phrases that's on my mind, Um, you know, saddling my horse and taking a ride. Like I, there's so many times I've just like caught myself and like even like, so my main thing is trying to be fluent on my prayer without my paper or without my guide I have. And so it's like, in order to get to that part, like I, I, I literally have caught myself like just, you know, just even saying it and somebody and like my husband will be like, what did you just say? And I'm like, oh, nothing. Like I'm, I'm, I'm literally talking to myself about it, you know, but it's just like, I have to practice it so many times. And like, when I tell my kids, like, I might say it just a little different than Kevin, or I might say it a little different than, you know, the next person that says it. Cause you know, there's that old language and there's that new language, but then there's also, you know, there is a man and a woman's way of saying it, but then there's also like different uh dialects. So between us and Canada, there's there's just so many ways to say it. And so, you know, um the main thing is that, you know, we're trying. And um what I learned this summer when I went on a Blackfoot Confederacy tour with some elders and they spoke fluent fluent blackfeet everywhere we went and i just sat there and i felt like that little kid in the candy store just just mouth wide open because i was sitting by them and i was like man like i wish i was like you like i wish i could just you know like the way we talk english i wish i could speak blackfeet like you you know and they're like you'll be there you know and i don't know it's, it's but it's so like you have to live your life like almost 100 percent just blackfeet way just to be that way you know and it it would mean me not speaking English or not explaining English to you but also just every everyday things you know and so that's a goal in mind and I hope to be there um I did understand a lot of what they're saying just because I could pick out part of their like phrases or their um you know part of the words that they're saying so like I I kind of knew what they were talking about just with like some of the stuff that I show my kids and and for me that was that was awesome because I was like I could still I still understood what they were saying you know and I was really scared to ask them but I said okay I heard you say something about a rock and I knew it was white you know and so then they went back and they're like oh yeah so this is what we said you know and then they explained it to us and I was like oh okay so I wasn't too far off it was just I was probably saying it wrong because my English brain was trying to put it in English terms where you know, instead of just like keeping my black feet brain and hey, you were right, you know, and you were on the right track, I guess. Um, so for me, this is like what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying to provide in my classroom. And I know most of you might, uh, you know, not be a black feet teacher or a black feet learner, but this is like what I suggest. And I feel like it's working for me because I feel like you know, I have a lot of students who come in here and ask me how to say this, how to say that, you know, and then I add on to it, you know, like if they're just trying to say the cup, you know, they're just trying to say goose, like we'll start going, okay, what color cup is it? You know, what are you going to go put in your cup? You know, are you going to put water? Are you going to put pop in there? What are you going to do with it? You know, we start talking about those things and then it's even, um, you know, what are you going to do with it later or uh, just adding on to it and um, I feel like they're they're starting to get it a little bit more um, both Indian kids you also remember like when they're not responding to you it's not that you know they're they're probably not engaged or they're probably just you know they're just really shy because um, all of kids you know come in here when it's my prep and ask me like how do you do this how do you do that you know and and that part makes me feel really confident in myself is that they're coming to me to ask me these things you know and and uh I have had a few kids like hey you kind of say that different than you know Kevin and and I'm like yeah well that's okay you know we're still saying it it still means the same thing this is how I learned this is probably how he learned you know and so it's just telling them you know it's not wrong that it's okay to make mistakes and even if they feel funny speaking like I just want them to try um because a lot of these kids that's that's their big thing is they don't want to talk in front of people so a lot of my assignments when they have to speak like I'll let them come up to my to my desk to my area and 
you know, just talk to me then. Or we'll go out in the hall, just talk, you know, let's talk out there. Um, or I've been having them uh in their voice memos, uh, record it and then send it to me, you know, because the some of them are won't don't even want to talk to you that you know in person and it it's okay though um so I've been encouraging kids like you know when you say something just record it you know because that's what I do I have so many songs and so many times where I was like oh I learned a new word and I'll pull out my phone and I'll, I'll record it you know and like Mike Jetty said earlier about the crow word you know that's something you know maybe I forgot that you could you know pull out your phone in an instant and have that voice memo on there we used to have tape recorders but now we have our phones at our fingertips and and it's pretty helpful to use um so I know I kind of went off on a whole tangent there um I was pretty nervous about what to tell you guys and what to show you guys um but I feel like as a language teacher and a culture teacher this is what I wanted to share and get out and whether it's you know crow language or Grovant or Nakoda or wherever you claim, I feel like, you know, we we can adapt all these lessons to fit where you need to fit them. And I honestly feel like if we had more Zoom classes where we're actually speaking languages to each other, I, I feel like we're going to get stronger that way in any language. Um, because sometimes like me, like I, I'll text uh, voice messages to my cousin Jesse DeRozier and he'll send them right back and then you know it, it it's not even talking on the phone anymore like well because we're so busy you know just to send a text at a certain time and respond to me when you can you know and my cousin Mike LaFron boys he's he's pretty good about that too um you know and just reaching out to them and are all like Kevin kicking woman he'll text me and it's like in black feet and then he'll send it back I'll send it back in black feet then he'll send it back in black feet and then you know he's just that's just like our language is between each other trying to you know get it out to one another I guess and not you know not as much I guess gatekeep as they call it and just share what we're doing with one another so that way everybody is doing it and our language is gonna build and be stronger um Something I heard at that conference this last weekend is our language, like we didn't run away from our language, um, or our language didn't leave us, that we left our language. So like something that I picked up from that is, you know, we we have lots of trauma and lots of excuses of why we're not doing it. But, you know, I the main thing I hear is, you know, the the settlers, the whites, they took it away from us. But I also feel like it's it's always been there that we're the ones that have to go on and do this. You know, nobody's going to say, hey, Shay, go be a language speaker. Go learn your language. Nobody, people are going to say that, but they're not going to, I'm, I have to be the one to go do it, if that makes sense. It's not, I can't just sit here and it's going to fall on my lap. Like, I got to make that, make that work for me, you know, so um my thing is just just to be encouraging and positive about it too like uh because I know if somebody gets on me or says I said it wrong like I'll I'll shut down and um so it's always just trying to uh be positive about it and know that it there are so many people that want to help there's so many different ways to learn it it's it's kind of like you know there's there's just there's just a lot we'll just say that there's zoom classes there's you know face-to-face classes there's there's all kinds of different things going on, immersion classes, and it. I feel like our language is getting stronger, and we have so many great teachers, and especially in our district, that are just that aren't even class seven teachers that are just trying, you know. And I I commend them for that because it's it's not easy. It's you know it's. I feel like sometimes kids look at me as a walking dictionary and I'm like, I'm, I'm not, you know, hold on, let me go look it up. Or I wrote it down here. You know, I have to say it back to them. They're like, well, don't you know it? And I'm like, yeah, I wish I knew. I, you know, I wish I did know it. Like, just like that, like, that's where I want to be, you know? Um, So I just want to say thank you guys for listening to me. And I want to leave this last, what, 10 minutes, 15 minutes open for any questions or comments or, anything that you guys need um 
that way I can help you guys or we can be on the same page everywhere. <clears throat> this is great. <clears throat> I have a couple of questions and try to make them brief so other people can't ask, but um, mm -hmm. do you have like ways to engage parents with any language lessons? Um, I honestly, like I, would, I encourage my students to go home and talk with them. And, and we have like, you know, go share your dictionary with them or there's phrases of the week or something that we're working on. I try to encourage that. Um, but I had to take it upon myself to start making videos and I like I don't I don't even like being on the screen or anything but I had to take it upon myself like hey if the, you know I'm gonna make this video and hopefully it gets out to like my students families because what I'm finding out with the high school kids is sometimes they don't tell their parents everything um, so I had to take it upon myself to make those videos and put them out there um, I, I know a couple of other educators that are doing that, uh, there's podcasts and everything. So that's my way is, is communicating with like my parents and the, the families I know is just, uh, even if it's sharing an audio, like not, you know, not me actually speaking or a paper, like, Hey, send this home. You know, those are my only ways I can communicate. Um, but I had a good idea from, um, he just presented this last weekend from a Cinnaboyne country, I guess. And he hosts parent classes and he talked about like this grandma comes in there with five of her grandkids and like he, you know, it's a it's a community class, but it's for his students, but with the grandma. And I thought that was really interesting. And I want I would like to do something like that. And that's something in our department we've been talking about too is how to engage our parents to come into that. So if we host, you know, even if it's a Zoom class too because I know everybody is so busy but something like this would be awesome yeah do your students make bit emoji characters as well for for class yeah um I wanted to pull out some of theirs because they're you know they're just funny but like to see because they're laughing at my bit emoji but um you know it has a cowboy hat and whatever and the the dance I picked down here it's eight by e. and at the time dabbing was cool and apparently dabbing is not cool it's I don't even know what it was called hit the gritty or something and <laughs> so I was like well find a dance move that looks like that you know like what does it look like to you guys and so they're they're having fun with that now now it's they're helping it's helping them to learn like that action I guess and now they're putting together a video like some of them don't have to be videos like it could be a powerpoint and uh, they could write the language instead of saying it I just take off different points um, but like I've had kids you know that are basketball players our wrestlers our football players you know like they're in that sport they're already running they're already jumping they're walking you know they're doing different things and like I've had them put a picture there and then put their language with it and they're like oh I didn't even know you could do that you know and I was like yeah and so like I had one boy ask like well can I put a picture of my uncle jumping on a horse you know and in relay and I was like oh yeah do that I said then you turn into a you know a man jumps on his horse and he's riding you know you you're doing more you know so it, it's it's helping to put the I guess, give them more words and then like make it more meaningful for them, you know, instead of me telling them, you know, this is the way it is. It's then it's more like it hits a a different part because it's like, oh, hey, I know how to say that because, you know, that's my uncle doing that, you know. So I'm having more fun, like helping them do that, I guess. And like they have pictures of their animals, you know, like we have cowboys here, we have Indians here, you know, and they have, they rodeo, they relay, they, you know, just even just, they just know how to ride a horse or like, you know, I was like, well, you know, your horse has to eat, has to drink, it sleeps, it walks, it runs, you know, there's five things just right there. And so like their whole assignment, they had to pick 10 phrases. So I was like, that's 50% right there. And they're like, I didn't even know it was that easy, you know? And so getting them to like, actually think about it and they're like, so I was like, yeah, now you can go home and say like, uh, uh, 
you know, your horse is eating or the horse is eating, you know, or you could say, no, das, uyi, my horse is eating. And then you could even change it and put colors there, you know, so, or what is he eating, you know, grass. And so it's just even like, they're, they're starting to realize like, oh, hey, you know, like I can add more vocabulary into just everyday things. Jay, I really appreciate you sharing this. This is just excellent. There were, you know, several things that stood out um, to synthesize it all together. And so in um, equity and education, you're engaging what's called, um, what they call leading, um, leading with the heart. Mm -hmm. And um, research has shown that when we lead with the heart, the rest comes for our students. And so the rest would be the learning comes for our students. And all of the different ways, I mean, I was just like, oh my gosh, when you gave the example of the student who's shy and doesn't want to speak in front of a group, well, you know, come to my desk, okay, we'll come out into the hall, okay, that still isn't working, send me a voice message. I was just like, wow. I mean, talk about a profound example of leading with the heart where you're just, you're meeting them where they're at and you you are making them feel safe and they know they belong. And those are all just incredible components. You're using technology and you've you've said, why fight the cell phone? Let's just make it part of part of the learning. Did you like literally have to fight your school board, you know, board policy and anti-cell phone and all of that? Um well, I I don't know how I did that. I, you know, I spoke <laughs> with my principals and my instructional coaches, like they they've come in, in so many times and uh, you know, just did a walkthrough or they're observing or they're just here and you know, I do have a cell phone basket. I do have my cell phone policy through the schools and through my own, you know, classroom. But like for me, I, I've explained that so many times to them. Like, you know, I, I'm i just glad they're here and they're, you, you know, they're engaged in what I'm doing, even if, you know, their cell phone is right here and then they could check it and put it back down. You know, we're all human. We do the same thing too. But my thing is like, Right now we're fighting like a nine ball epidemic. And if you haven't had nine ball in your classroom yet, it's pool on your on your phones. And the kids are literally playing pool on their phones, you know. And I'm like, all right, guys, you gotta pause your game, you know, you get there, you know, you have to put it away, basically. I was like, you can have it out, just flip it over, you know, and it's just like teaching them how you know, to be mindful. And when you're in here, like, I need you to like, just engage in the language, you know, that stuff can wait. Um, you know, I could go off for like 15 minutes on the rules about it and everything. And it's like, okay, flip it over, you know, and they know if I have to tell them so many times that I'm, I'm actually just gonna, you know, just stop, like, we need to put your phone away, you know, I, I'll give them little reminders. But like I said, like most of them want to be on TikTok. They want to be on Snapchat. And I'm like, okay, so I got to meet you somewhere to do this. You know, like, how are we going to make this possible? You know, and like, we're talking about nine ball. Like I had to teach them the number nine, you know, and how to say ball. And we're looking at the word shoot, you know, because that's what they're doing. They're playing pool is what they're doing, but they're playing each other like virtually, you know. And so like, it's just like, uh you know, like I said, I have to meet them somehow, but I'm all like, okay, so if you give me this much time, I'll give you, you know, freedom of like 10 minutes at the end of this lesson. If you just, you know, give me this time to talk, then you guys could have your cell phones back, you know, I'll release the reins, basically. It's kind of like, but like I said, I have to, I have to pick my battle some days. Like, it's really like, because I, you know, like I, that's their property. I can't really I'm not going to sit there and fight with somebody all day about it. You know, that's where I'm at is there's, if that's the one person and there's 19 others that want to learn, like I just got to, you know, these other 19 need my attention at this moment and I want to deliver my lesson. So I'm not going to sit here and fight with one, you know, and I, and it's like I said, it's getting to a point of like, I just got to help them be the model too so a lot of times my phone is on my desk also and just showing them like hey I don't need my phone as much as you guys do you know so I love it thank you I mean just it's it's just 
it's really um, awesome to see an educator who respects their students so much that, you know, you're just very creative in how you absolutely meet them where they're at. One other question, because um, like we OPIers, we'd actually get fired if we're on TikTok on our, um, yeah. it's a, it's a state government ban. Um, literally oh, yeah. the one, the one reason they can just like send us packing out the door. Um, so TikTok in the, in, um, I haven't heard that Snapchat. So TikTok, your school district isn't all concerned about those types of so social media platforms? Oh, everybody is very concerned, you know, they're, but it's, you know, if it's on their cell phone, that's their privacy, you know, if it's on the uh, iPad that's distributed from the school, like there is a internet policy and like um, acceptable use that they, the students had to sign in the handbook. So, you know, the, technically they shouldn't even be on that during school hours uh, or the school device. But like for me, when we were making the videos, it was more and less for them to, because um, there, a lot of kids are just scrolling through TikTok as I've like just observed from them. They're scrolling through TikTok. And so I'm like, well, why don't you watch like a video on language? And I'm like, they're like, there's no videos on like our language, you know? And I'm like, all right, so go follow this person or go follow that person. So like, cause there's other people that are out there that are doing this. And so I, I'm encouraging them to go follow like, like Robert Hall, our director, he makes videos if you guys haven't seen those. Um, I had to use my own personal one. Uh, just to create the video because of, I don't know how to make the other video but then the kids are showing me like a different app and stuff and where it's not on social media and so that was my only way of like encouraging TikTok to be more positive I guess is if you're gonna sit there and scroll then I want you to watch my video you know and I want you to like learn this you know and that that was my whole like idea about it um, rather than you know like what the bad side could be you know like I can't control what they're gonna watch or what they're gonna navigate but at one point like hey since you have this much time to look through TikTok I want you to stop by and look at some of these videos or some of these people that are doing stuff out there you know because they are sitting there and watching their phone so um you know, I try to tell them to do it after school not during school hours but you, you know like I say you can only lead the horse to water so Absolutely. Thank you, Shay. This was awesome. I really appreciate it. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. Um, we're about at time. So we'll, um, I guess just say we appreciate you. And thank you for being a teacher out there for all our young people and give, sharing your knowledge with us. Mm -hmm. um, if any educators out there are interested in renewal units, uh, please share your email and name so we can um, send a survey out to you, a little tiny thing, and then get you hooked up with those units. Um, all right. Well, thank you all for coming. Um, quickly in the in the chat, Mike Jetty shared uh, a, a new lesson um, about.